Concentrate the attention on the birthday person. Glorifying him and not God. And exalting him and not God. And having people bring him presents. They pay homage to the birthday child. Like religions out there pay homage to go to a certain place. To have a, a, uh, a pilgrimage. You're doing that with this birthday child. You're coming from afar. Some, you know, they come on airplane or buses or train to come for this birthday child all the way far away to see this birthday child to give him gifts. To praise him on his day. Glory, hallelujah to this child. Well, yeah, will they spend a, a midweek service in church will they tell someone about Jesus I'm preaching to Christians here I'm teaching Christians I'm not teaching the lost the only thing I teach the lost is you need to be born again you need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior don't worry about this stuff you worry about your salvation and once you get saved then you grow up in the Lord and worry about stuff like this I'm talking to you people that are already born again, saved, and active in doing this garbage. This is the height of the this is the height of fosters a spirit of get selfishness and self worship. The whole great program creates pride, and you never find pride with God. Pride or proud. The Bible speaks of Satan as the king over the pride, or the children of pride, excuse me. God never has pride. God is never proud. Check the scriptures on pride and proud. It's not holiness. It's lofty conceit in a selfishness of a child. The typical birthday party is therefore one as deceptions of the devil, Satan. Made to look attractive. You know, he makes everything look so good. That's what he did in Genesis 3 to Eve with the fruit. And nice on the outside, but full of wickedness on the inside. That's what Jesus described the Pharisees. He said, you're white acceptors on the outside, but you're full of dead man bones. See, I can quote the scriptures and show you the scriptures. If our purpose is to build godly and holy offspring, our children, and loving, giving godly children, then we should want to do nothing that would hinder this path for a grown child of God. And this also should be for any child of God of any age. Put no temptations in their walk. Do nothing to encourage them to think highly or too highly of themselves in pride and arrogance. Rather, we should teach them to give, to serve, and to be humble. To re revere God and His Word, and to love other children, and to seek to help, serve, and honor others. See, birthdays do the complete opposite. You bring me gifts, you give me, you know, I want the chocolate ice cream cake. And if I don't get it, I'm going to throw a hissy fit. I want the, these decorations. If you don't get these directions, these uh, things, I'm not going to be part of my own birthday party. Oh, I get to fight only who I want to fight. Birthday celebrations were definitely of pagan origin. Should God's people eliminate the pagans and pagan societies around them? Let's go back to Jeremiah 10. I said we're going to be going back to Jeremiah. We've already established who Jeremiah was and what God thought of him. So we're going to ask his counsel again about paganism. We're going to ask him about the heathen. We're going to we already asked him about happy birthday and said no, curse be the birthday. In Jeremiah 10:1, hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you. This is God speaking, okay? Don't you think you want to listen to God? Don't you think God knows what he's talking about? Thus saith the Lord, 
Learn not the way of the heathen. You got to learn their ways. You got to seek how to do what you do. How to color the eggs. How to put the little hooks on the things and hang them on the tree. How to, you know, all the other junk that goes on. And be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. Ooh, look at the alignment of the stars and the planets. I guess I'm going to have a good day today. For the heathen are dismayed at them. That's the astrology we learn. For the customs of the people are vain. For one cut of the tree and we'll get into the forest and the work in the hands. Of, let's talk about a Christmas tree. In Jeremiah chapter 10, we'll get into that, Lord willing, one day. But God said to Jeremiah to say, Learn not the way of the heathen, and the customs of the people are vain. So what do you think about birthdays? Clearly the Almighty God command his people not to follow the ways and custom and practices of the heathen, the pagan nations around them. Obviously, the, therefore, the word of God does not sanction or approve of public birthday celebration or birthday parties. Now in Genesis 40, we read about what nation? Egypt. Thank you. Run over to Leviticus 18. We learn about Egypt. We just learned about the heathens in Jeremiah. In Leviticus 18, verse 3, After the doings of the land of Egypt, wherein ye dwelt, shall ye not do. Oh, Pharaoh had a birthday. Pharaoh had a party. We just read that birthday celebrations in Egypt was like our birthday celebrations. This is a little different twist in it. I mean, we just changed the name and we protect the innocent. I mean, Easter and Star Day, I mean, just change the name. Baal and God, just change the name. Queen of Heaven for Mary, just change the name. We're not to do the things after Egypt. So, should Christians celebrate birthdays? Obviously, the answer to the Word of God has is no. Birthdays are one more satanic trickery, like Christmas and Easter, which foster and instruct the wrong kind of spirit and behavior in a child. You know, the spirit of Christmas? You know, Christmas and Easter is to get, get, get. You give the kid presents. You give the kid chocolate. You give the kid eight eggs. Get, 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 get. It's an abomination to God. And b birthday celebrations are not among the biblical customs of the Bible. The fact is that Bible is totally silent. On the date of the birth of every single servant of God, including Abraham, Noah, Moses, Samuel, David, and the apostles, and the most important of all, Jesus Christ himself. Tell me the dates, book, chapter, and verse of any of the men I mentioned. The early church of God understood the fact, Lewis writes in her book of birthdays, when the Christian church sought to substitute the authority of a religious hierarchy for the ego money of the individual ego, birthdays became unwelcome reminders of pagan excess. And the de degraduation assumed in Adam's heritage. Celebrating the self was bad, page 14. In other words, the early church of God said, listen, birthdays are of Adam. They're of sin. We're not going to raise ourselves up. No. The world book. Childcraft International says regarding holidays and birthdays. For thousands of years, people all over the world have 
thought of a birthday as a very special day. Long ago, people believed that a birthday, a person could be helped by good spirits or hurt by evil spirits, demons. The reason why the King James Bible doesn't say demons because this is demons. Demons in Greek mythology, they were good ones and they were bad ones. You couldn't tell the difference sometimes. Where the King James Bible says devils of Satan, bad ones. Wicked ones of hell. Those that follow Satan. It is never demons in the King James Bible. But here we see devils and spirits and demons will be with you on your birthday. Does that sound Christian like? Does that sound like the Holy Spirit dwelling in your heart and the fruits of the Spirit? Oh, Spirit too. Sorry. So when people had a birthday, friends and relatives gathered to protect them. Or her. So Christian, when you celebrate that birthday, you all gathered around to protect that, that person from the good spirits and the bad spirits. What do you think God thinks of that mess? But we just did, yeah, yeah, that's your motive. But listening to this video, listening to this broadcast, now you know that James said to him that knows to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Now you are without excuse to these, to these lessons. I nailed you to the ground. You can no longer say, God, I, don't, I didn't know. And God's going to bring some ugly man's name, Stanley Harris, and say, come here. On May 31st, what did you teach? Uh, I can remember that, Lord. I had to do it ten times. Talked about birthdays. Thank you very much. Step back. The idea of putting candles on a birthday cake goes back to ancient Greece. You ready for this one? The Greeks worshipped many gods, small g, and goddesses. G-O-D-D-E-S-S-E-S, -E -S -S, like Mississippi, too many S's. Among them was one called Artemis. R-A-R-T-E-M-I-S. Artemis was the goddess of the, remember the word I told you? Moon. The lunatic of the Greek, I mean, excuse me, sorry. The Greeks celebrated her birthday once each month by bringing, we need to go to Jeremiah 7 before I say the next word. Jeremiah 7, I know where this verse is. I've quoted it so often when it came to Mother's Day. I've quoted it so often when it came to Valentine's Day. And now on birthdays, I'm quoting this verse again. Wow. We know who Jeremiah is, right? Okay. Jeremiah 7.18. The children gathered the wood, and the fathers kindled the fire, and the women knead their dough, to make cakes to the queen of heaven. And to pour out drink offerings unto other gods. That they may provoke me, God, the God, to anger. That provokes God to anger. Now listen. Let's read, 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 read. What provokes God to anger? Artemis was the goddess of the moon. Greeks celebrated her birthday once a month by bringing special cakes to her temple. Would you just read in Jeremiah? It provokes God to anger. The cakes were round. Birthday cake. Well, we got we got a rectangular man. We got one that looked like Mickey Mouse. Well, the cakes were round like a full moon, and because the moon glows with light. The cakes were decorated with lighted candles. Jeremiah 7.18 and says, The fathers kindled the fire while the wives made the cakes. When you lit those candles, you lit those candles not for a birthday. You lit, you lit those candles to Arthemis, the Greek god of the moon. 